The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I once spoke about this topic and a doctor from New Jersey came over to me and he told me a mice with his mother, an elderly woman. He said, my mother had a heart condition. This is what the doctor from Jersey is telling me. My mother had a heart condition. And as a result, she didn't know if she could take a particular medicine, Erev Pesach. Is it Chometz or not? So she called her Moshe Feinstein, Erev Pesach. The busiest person on the planet. On the busiest day of the Jewish year. Maybe that in Erev Yom Kippur. And Reb Moshe, with the patience of Reb Moshe, told her why it's not a problem, and why it's not chametz, and why she could take it. All the patience, all the brachas, all the good wishes. And even in a good yard, the doctor told me my mother called her Moshe, heir of Pesach, I'm not kidding, for well over 20 years. Now I'm speaking in front of many Rabbanim Chashuvim. Imagine if a Rav gets the same phone call every pace over a quarter of a century. I don't know that after a number of years we'd be answering the same way. The same patience. Reb Maisha. It's not chametz, why it's not an issue, why you could take it. One year, the doctor told me my mother was getting elderly, a bit forgetful, and she forgot to call Reb Maisha. It was two hours before Yantif. And the phone rang in her home. And she picked up and the voice on the other end said, it's Moshe Feinstein calling. Are you okay? I didn't hear from you and I was so concerned. And only after she reassured Reb Moshe that she was okay and she forgot to call, after he was no longer worried and concerned, did he reiterate what he did for a quarter of a century, why you could take the medicine, why it's not an issue, why it's okay, why it's not close, and venture on a good yard. Could you imagine? I maybe shouldn't say this publicly. I don't know. They say TMI, too much info. If I would come home and my wife, my Robinson, would tell me that I got out of a phone call, that's exciting news. There's a call I don't have to make. Uh, Sometimes maybe men could relate. Like you come to show and you find out, no tachron today. (laughs) Meinich on a Monday and Thursday. That's how you feel. Reb Moshe, the busiest man in the world on the busiest day of the year. All that was on his mind was, are you okay? Are you all right? I didn't hear from you. I need you. I just want to be Messiah. I want this story. I'm sorry. I never did this before. <laughs> but I'm not Miss. I wasn't Messiah yet. <laughs> It says the worst thing a speaker you could do is get up and speak a second time. <laughs> so, Reb Gershon Weiss, you remember him? This is for you, for your... Reb Gershon Weiss is Mashkiach, but now I'll step now Yeshiva. Very close to Reb Mashiach, very, very close to Reb Mashiach. He told me if Reb Mashiach was into the following story. He said, there's a woman in Barra Park, yesterday, I'm thinking, so yesterday I was in Lakewood, I spoke in Lakewood, and a lady came up to me. She said, she's a daughter of Reb Gershon Weiss. And the story exactly as I heard from Reb Mashiach, Reb Gershon Weiss, 30, 36 years ago, she was left to... They lived on 18th Avenue, a two family house on 18th Avenue. Yes, I lived upstairs, downstairs, a Hasidish couple with a number of children. I know the last name. Like you said, I won't say the last name. We'll call him Cohen. The kids are, yeah, right, sir. They lived downstairs, and the lady had a very schwer case of MS, multiple sclerosis, and she became pregnant. And the doctor said if she goes through with it, it could be psychotic to flushes for her. They went in those years for Moshe Bick, who was a Rav in Barapak. And Moshe Bick said he thought and thought and thought that it was a Shver Shaila to tell a person to make an abortion. I can't. And Moshe Bick was very close to Moshe Feinstein. So this, this answer only Moshe Feinstein can give. And they went, the husband and the wife, and I have a riot brew at this story. At the end of it. They went to Man- the east side to Manhattan, and they sat for Moshe. Moshe asked all the medical details. Uh, it's too hard a Shaila. Moshe always answered it in five seconds with all the sources right away. I need a couple hours to think about it. They came back and he said, have the baby, you'll be okay, and the child will be wonderful. Yeah. A year later, Geshe Weiss told me he was walking down the steps. Come up to downstairs, and the kids come running, they knew all about Rabbi Shev Weiss, Rabbi Geshe Weiss, Rabbi Shev on the phone. He said before, he called up the lady, right? Rabbi Shev on the phone. He ran inside, and the lady, he wanted he to speak to this woman, to the mother. 
of course, we got the, the lady had a baby. She was okay. I mean, she had MS, and the child was okay. He says, according to my cheshman, today is your baby's first birthday. I'm calling to wish you happy birthday in many more years. Gershon Weiss ate this on the story. Of course, the next time I gave a drush in the mountains, I started with a story. The Chesid Shabbat on the back stands up. He says, it's true. It's my sis, It's my brother. I show you. They, he got married, this Bach, this child got married, the mother was still living. He got married, and his first child was named for a Moshe, his name was Moshe. Wow. He called to say happy birthday. Finish your speech now, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you something that Rabbi Bender doesn't know. <laughs> we can do that. I'm talking going to end in a second with a word and a story. That's it, it's a word and a story. But I have to say something for 30 seconds that Rabbi Bender doesn't know. Why that story made me unusually emotional. When art school came out with the Rav Moshe book, my father's at Sal, your cousin, was very makbid. He didn't call it a book, he called it a sefer. He called it a sefer. And he went through it, my father's at Sal went through it. My father had a custom that when he came to a Dvar Torah that he especially enjoyed, he took out a red pen, like a red marker, and he would mark the side of the Dvar Torah. Something earned three marks, Five lines, eight lines, ten lines. And I have thousands of those for him with all the marks, knowing what it was that my father particularly loved. So I have that Reb Moshe Sefer, the Art Scroll of Moshe book. And one can gladly go through it if you come visit me. And that Misa, I don't think it's with the name Reb Gershon Weiss, but that Misa is brought down in the Reb Moshe Sefer. Yeah. And next to it, my father has what seems to be dozens of red lines. And he told me, now I remember when he marked up that mice. I'm not saying it now. I remember when he marked it up. My father's almost coming to his 25th yards. I remember when he marked it up. And he called me over and he made me read it. And he showed me how many red marks. And he was just beyond, beyond words. From that mice that Rabbi Bender Shlita just said over your Mechaim I have that art scroll safer on Rabbi Moshe where I cannot even, I think the only reason the red mark stopped is because the page ended. <laughs> that mice. My father felt that that mice was Kaidish HaKadoshim in a league by itself. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.